Time to take my allergy medication, because you guys selected by a pretty large margin the differences between Rakasta and the other lesser cat people in D&D RPGs. I know it said Rakasta versus Tabaxi, but there were a lot of questions on the newly added Leonin, and the cat race from Pathfinder, and Kaijit from Skyrim. So why not talk about all of them? Not like any of them can match the Rakasta in sheer diversity or, or awesomeness. Welcome to Mistara. I'm Mr. Welch, and today we're petting the kitties. Might as well start at the top and work our way down, and that's the Rakasta. Not the Rakshasa, which those are guys are actual demons and only appear like cat people. I'm talking about the felines with the humanoid classification rather than the abominations and extraplanar creatures that are just like cat people. So spritzing the Rakshasa back to the Nine Hells with my squirt bottle full of holy water, uh, it's time to get back to the real cat people. Rakasta are native to Mistara and are featured in the Thunder Rift setting, which is tangentially linked to Mistara. Of the cat races, Rakasta are the most varied, appearing across the globe, first appearing in the Isle of Dread model, but then having their own nation on the savage coast with Belain. Socially, Rakasta are all over the place. The greater Rakasta are solitary creatures. The wild Rakasta are almost exclusively found in tribes in the wilderness. The domestic Rakasta fall in between, as they've adopted to city seamlessly and form simple family units akin to humans or hen. The biggest difference Rakasta have compared to other feline humanoids is the sheer diversity of the colors and the sizes they come in. Domestic and wild Rakasta resemble regular cats and come in a variety of coloration and facial features. Different Rakasta resemble different breeds, so Manx, Scottish Fold, Persian, Siamese, and Tabbies are common styles of Rakasta, but by no means the only option. Greater Rakasta resemble the great cats, taking on the appearance of lions, tigers, jaguars, panthers, cheetahs, lynxes, bobcats, and the African sand cats, to name a few. No other feline humanoid breed comes close to the different appearances the Rakasta possess. Socially, the Rakasta, again, are quite varied. Greater Rakasta prefer solitude. They aren't necessarily antisocial, but they just don't tend to form family groups and are typically found in the wild, serving as rangers, hunters, or trappers. They aren't restricted to this behavior. There are instances where a greater Rakasta will move to a city or join with an adventuring group for a variety of reasons. Wild Rakasta prefer their tribal life, working together to hunt and trade. They've domesticated saber-toothed tigers and have taken on more of a warrior aspect. They are quite social creatures, even with their love of fighting. For the wild Rakasta, there's no greater sign of acceptance of a stranger than being challenged to spar. Then you get to the domestic Rakasta, which have completely adapted to urban life. They can be found working almost any job, though a number of them have taken to crime. Their most common profession for domestic Rakasta is craftsmen or merchants. I would be remiss if I didn't mention the Samurai Jungle Space Cats on the Lost Moon of Miyashima. Those are pretty much Imperial Japanese cat people. And that's all you can really say about them. If you take any generic samurai movie and add cats, you've got Miyashima Rakasta. The one defining trait shared by all Rakasta is they love the finer things in life. Greater Rakasta will trade furs for the best weapons and gear. Wild Rakasta meet merchant ships on the beaches to trade pottery and blankets for clothes and jewelry. Domestic Rakasta buy the best clothes, decorate their homes with the finest arts, and of course keep everything immaculate. Rakasta, if nothing else, aren't tidy creatures. One of the best ways to get on the good side of a Rakasta is offer them fine food or similar delicacies. A stronger form of catnip known as tiger bane is always welcome. One drawback with this aspect of Rakasta is they are known for being poor at budgeting their money. Rakasta will take his or her share from a dungeon crawl, blow it all in a single night, buying new luxuries and booking the party at the finest hotels, then arranging for a multi-course banquet without asking the party first. Because of this, when towns see a group of Rakasta approaching, they welcome them with open arms. Now, compare all that backstory to the Tabaxi. Compared to the Rakasta with all their variations, Tabaxi are leopard people. And they've always just been leopards or panthers, going all the way back to first edition's Fiend's Folio. According to the lore, Tabaxi are reclusive without much use of money or wealth. They're curious, and most of them have traveled to new lands either because of slavers taking them or they became adventurers. They do have a traditional homeland in Cholt, but they don't have a nation of their own like the Rakasta do in Belain. Now for the part people were waiting for, the ability comparisons. First up, both of them get a plus two to dexterity. The Tabaxi gets a plus one to charisma, where the Rakasta's second bonus is broken down by the sub-race. With the domestic sharing the charisma bonus, the wild Rakasta getting a constitution bump, and the greater Rakasta getting a strength bump. Rakasta are faster with 35 speed compared to the Tabaxi's 30. Both have dark vision, because everything has dark vision that's not human. They can use their claws to deal 1d4 damage, though the Rakasta's claws are a finesse weapon in addition. Tabaxi get bonus skills, have a climbing speed, and have the ability to double their speed during combat in certain situations. 
The basic bonuses for the Rakasta is they take half damage from falls, they're proficient with the Kasas, a type of short sword that they strap to their forearms. They also have a fear of water, giving them penalties on skill checks if wet. The subrace abilities are saving throws on death saves for the domestics, a roar ability for the greater Rakasta, and the wild Rakasta are better at leaping than other races. Then you head over to not ancient Greece, where Lionel and his merry men reside with the Leonin. As the name suggests, they are lion people all the way. Not tiger people, not house cat people, lion men. There seems to be a lot more men than women in the Leonin, judging by the art, because everybody's got a mane. They are a nomadic matriarchal society who likes to fight. Makes sense, because their stats shoehorn them into fighter types. Stat-wise, they're just as fast as Rakasta and have all the claws that the cat races possess. They get bonus skills and dark vision. They have a roar akin to the greater Rakasta, but unlike every other cat race, they get a bonus to con and strength instead of dex. Pathfinder has the Murren, which are the name for what used to be called cat folk. I'm not going to compare their stat much because it's going across two different games and the differences don't translate well. They are very like the Rakasta. They have the curiosity of the tabaxi. They're lithe and most of their abilities deal with agility and evasion. There's not a lot to go on in print. They are only found in a few countries, but wanderers can be found in small numbers in most nations. Then skipping over to Tamriel in the Elder Scrolls world, the Kajit are a bunch of thieving drug dealers from the province of elsewhere. They typically resemble lynxes, though variants exist. They are nimble and stealthy, with claws that they prefer to use over weapons, at least in the lore. Kajit that make their way to Skyrim tend to give up their people's use of claws in combat, and instead take up the mantle of Stealth Archer, as to fit in with the other nine races who have also adopted Stealth Archery. They are an easily conquered people and aren't trusted by those living outside their native land, despite their pleas of innocence and that they did nothing wrong. Well, that's the rundown of cat people of D&D and beyond. They aren't a common race outside of Mastara, Greyhawk, and the Forgotten Realms. They don't have a presence in either settings unless it's a catch-all setting. Most of the cat people are just one type of cat in humanoid form. In D&D, you've got leopards and you've got lions. Mastara's Rakasta are the exception and the only one with sub-races. I hope that was informative. Turns out that there's not a lot of information on the tabaxi outside of a few snippets here and there, and the ink hasn't even dried yet on the Leonin showing up in yet another Magic the Gathering book that was better covered in the fantastic second edition of Age of Heroes source book, which gave you everything you needed to know about playing Ancient Greece and D&D in a game series line that is sorely underappreciated. But then again, you can't trademark Zeus, so we had to make something up, I guess. So let's see, what's next in the list for Mastara? And it's Mastara in video games, which is kind of prophetic because somebody asked for this in the uh, voting earlier and I didn't realize it was literally the next topic up for a vote. So vote for the next topic and I need to start writing down more ideas because I'm down to just a few more months from the original list. But until next week, remember, friends don't let friends play Sphinx Cat Girls.